Welcome everybody to Sustainability at Work. In this episode, we will talk with a woman who, on a quest to find a sustainable black dress for a cocktail, ended up founding a top 10 fashion tech company. It's a startup supported among others by the Prada Group, Accenture and Unilever. She also speaks six languages and she is a leader for climate action. Before we dive into this episode with Iris of Renoun, I would like to share some figures on the industry of fashion and on the increased demand for more sustainable options. Every second across the world, we throw away the equivalent of one garbage truck worth of textiles every second. So not only we are producing more garments, but we are also using them less and less. And meanwhile, while in many studies people say they want to buy more sustainable products, then really only about a third of them really do. And often the reason is that it's too complicated or time consuming. So we end up looking for shortcuts to trust that we try to align with our values. Our guest today spent the last year developing with her team what some people have called the Google of sustainable fashion. I believe it's much more. So let's dive in with Iris. Sustainability at Work is a podcast about sustainability in the workplace and in companies. My name is Samara and I've been working with sustainability for almost 10 years. Welcome everybody to Sustainability at Work. Thank you for being with us. Uh, today we are, we are with Iris. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Samara. I am very happy to be with you today because we're going to talk about Renoon. Uh, Renoon is a platform and it's an app and we will see, you will tell us what, what it does. But I think it's an incredible project because it addresses, um, I think, three of the main uh, challenges that many people working in sustainability find so difficult to address, which to me are, first, what sustainability is. Something that is changing so much, it means different people to do different things to different people all over the world or in different industries. So what sustainability is. Then what makes sustainability easier? how we can make this easier because it's so complicated and third is how we make the niche go mainstream how we scale sustainability Mm -hmm. so i think this is really inside your project so much so i am really looking forward to hear what you have to say so tell us about uh renoun what is it yeah exactly so yeah first of all uh thank you for this intro and i also really excited to be here uh, indeed, sharing uh, this part of the journey. Renoon is a fashion tech startup. We're based in Amsterdam. We were born uh, just a year ago. Actually, we just celebrated in uh, February 2020. And everything has been going so fast. And I guess, yeah, we are really happy with the whole process that has been put in place, but also the response that we're getting from the industry in itself, but also the market when it comes to consumers. So really showing how in this recent years uh, everything is changing and everything is going in that direction so it's really great um, to really see it and i also believe that not only us but also all the different startups that are in sustainability are making that happen which is great renew was born by uh, a story actually i'm the first user consumer of renew which indeed when you're building a startup this makes it much more easy um, because as a, as a founder, you know exactly what the pain is. And also, you, you really have the passion to solve it uh, because you know what it actually means to do that. Two years ago, um, I had made a lot of changes in my personal life. I had started with food, uh, going um, really like being more conscious of what I was eating, changing my diet as well. Also with more uh, per- personal care as well. And then suddenly I I made the connection, which I hadn't strictly made before that. Also the knowledge that I had as a consumer uh, of the problems of of fashion really became something that I had on top of my mind. And so it happened that I was looking for a black black dress for a party at my previous company. And I realized I didn't know where to start. So uh, I ended up 
going back to from work every night on my laptop or on my phone, uh, searching and googling and trying to find brands, trying to find. Then once I found the brands, I was looking for the websites where those brands would be sold, and then uh, trying to find uh, the model that I liked and if it was in my size. So it, yeah, I basically spent a month and a half, and that normally it's a process that usually took me. 10 minutes, a couple of clicks, you just find something online and buy it. So that's where I realized this is not sustainable. Like I thought I would have a panic attack if I had to like uh, find another thing that was uh, sustainable in my view and I had to make an impact. So I realized that although the, the more I was looking, the more also I started seeing great innovation, uh, brands that were already doing great things, shops that were already selling amazing things. It was just so difficult to have everything in one place because you have this bits and pieces spread around the web. And so that's where we had, I had the, the initial intuition of um, we need to do something about it. So I went to talk to an ex-colleague and we started indeed conceptualizing uh, Renown and uh, we really came up with the concept of building this place uh, that aggregates the offering that it's available from multiple websites and really becoming the guide that can help consumers do this in a very easy way. So making really finding and making good choices, something so easy that everyone can become an important player towards this shift that we're all trying to make. I had a similar experience when I read about the tuna fish industry. And then the next time I went to the supermarket and I was looking at all these walls of different tuna fish brands, and I was lost. And I think at the end, I didn't buy anything. <laughs> I decided just to leave yeah. the tuna fish out. Yeah. yeah. So as you are explaining a little bit, I, I heard also many people are talking about Renown, like the Google of sustainable fashion. Uh, but I think there is something to add to this about how it works for consumer. And I think it's the framework and mm -hmm. this idea of being able to choose your values and yep. have them as a yep. filter. How does exactly. it work? Exactly. So we've developed a proprietary technology that extracts the information from the websites and then it processes information based on materials, composition, uh, certifications and processes that are mentioned. What we uh, we are doing is, so we, we really saw the importance of distinguishing what is sustainability at the brand level uh, and corporate CSR with actual sustainability that it's done inside the product. Because in the end, as consumers, we, in the end, we buy the, the, the single product, of course, also the, the, the being part of the brand, uh, but indeed we, we buy the single product. And so we really saw that this was a, an important step to do for uh, the consumers and the industry to, first of all, avoid greenwashing, but also avoid that problem in which a product is inherently good, uh, but then the brand also doesn't know how to express that or how to show the value of why this product that I've made is so much better than the other one and why maybe also it costs more. So we really see that um, it, it was important in our framework to do this. And the framework at the product level, for us, it was really great to have the technology behind because that means that we can keep up with the highest standards and actually be at the top of them. And, and that's so much easier with a technology product because we don't hold any stock, we don't hold anything at all. But we can just see the next day that X, Y, Z is not good enough because there's another step so um, we can do that next step into our uh, framework so the good thing about it is that it's a constant update and that uh, indeed the, the, it's an objective way to let products in and out and there's no way we can argue with that so uh, if a product doesn't have those attributes then there's nothing we can do mm -hmm. and at the brand level what is important to us is to shed light well, this is also the name of Renoon that actually comes to this because when we think about sustainability, we think about reusing, reducing, recycling and repeating all of that. And what we saw is that for consumers and for the industry, we need to bring light to it. And uh, at noon is the uh, time in the day where there's most light. So that's why uh, with Renoon, we really want to bring light to what the brand is doing 
So the amount of products that I can actually pass the sustainability framework and then at the corporate, at the brand level, what is that label doing and where is it concentrating their efforts? And then it's here. Um, we believe that we can make a difference because when it comes to sustainability, it's something that it cannot be absolute. So it depends on what's your goal as a brand, but also as a consumer you have. What is it that you want to do? Where is the impact that you want to make? And then basically match those values together. So complicated. I can imagine the technology <laughs> behind it is very complicated because in all of these, then you have to remember all the complication from normal fashion, beauty yeah, trends. Exactly. <laughs> Sizing. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, can imagine. Exactly. So what can you explain a little bit more about the categories where you yep. can choose and the values actually? As, as you said at the beginning, so sustainability is a very complex topic. And the problem with it is that it has probably been simplified too much. And then so sort of we, we say this product is sustainable and then we um, we let it like that which also for consumers now, it's becoming something that they are less uh, able to trust uh, right now because it could mean everything and nothing. Uh, so we want to bring back that complexity of it, but not in a complex way in that sense. So we want to make complexity something easy because we want to bring the reality back. So what we've done is we've looked at the different areas of the impact as a, a consumer or a brand I can make. Um, and the end goal is that we can have an impact on our environment. So that's our first pillar. And we have other three pillars that are the most important ones. So we are four plus one, but it's a, a more something that comprehends a little bit also the rest, uh, puts, puts all together. So indeed, as I said, it's environmental protection. And in there, we have uh, different then attributes that a brand or a product can have. It can go from lowering emission, recycling, upcycling products to being carbon neutral as a brand until uh, then we have the human well-being bucket and that we put everything that it has to do with small businesses, um, uh, women-led uh, businesses and women-owned. And we have ethical labor um, and until inclusivity within the model that actually represent that brand and also uh, can, can help also the consumer feel in a, in a good way in that sense. And then we have the animal ethics. So in there, um, we have, for example, veganism or uh, responsible animal origin that uh, a product can have. And then we have a bucket, which uh, is something that I really like. It's the innovation and technology part. So how the, the brand and also as a consumer accessing uh, and experimenting with materials that are still in, in experiment mode as well, uh, but that could potentially be the future of materials that then are adopted by also others, but also yeah, becoming those that are, can be early adopters in them and finding in, in, a, in an easy way. And then the final bucket is the modern consumption. So we really see that sustainability for us as 360 degrees. It's not only about how products are made, in a linear way, but also how they're consumed and how they're indeed getting to, to the consumer in the end. So in this bucket, for example, we have indeed a vintage, we have rental as, as a way to access products in a different and more sustainable way, as well as uh, things like uh, having a slow fashion brand. Um, so meaning slowing down our consumption uh, and, um, yeah, making it uh, more sustainable in that sense. And how are brands reacting? Because I think this is really a mine of data and information that brands can use to address a better, a very complicated thing to address, which is how the values of sustainability are changing in the mind of consumers and how they are changing in society. So... I, I know that you have been backed by huge brands. Congratulations. And so how are they are reacting? The brand that from the beginning we wanted to build uh, was about positivity. So bringing light into exactly what the brand is doing without also finger pointing uh, on, on it. For sustainability to take a step further, it would need that both from a consumer perspective, but also brand perspective. So now we, have, we do have a focus on brands that 
have sustainability really as an important uh, mission within the brand or have already started to shift that through management and also indeed at the company level. So are already brands that are mature in that sense, more mature in this topic. But we work both with uh, small brands and big brands. So what we've seen is that um, for smaller brands, um, a platform like Renewon is something that is really valuable because as a small brand, it can it can be now nowadays it's very difficult to get in front of the consumer in the, mm-hmm. even online and actually make the consumer understand the value of of it as well. So Renewon is is a great window for that to display that. And also, I have to say, in our framework, we do make this consideration. So we do make this split between a small brand and a big brand because a smaller brand doesn't have the possibility to, for example, reach uh, some specific uh, certifications. They're, they, they're not even something that they could do even if they wanted to. And on the other side, yeah, if it's a bigger brand, we would expect the brand to do more or to have more proof of what it's doing that is, is indeed certified and has been taken to the next level. And what we are seeing is really that through Renewn, brands can actually express all they're doing in a, in a better way and uh, really get in front of the consumer that would otherwise can only know about them through maybe targeted ads on Facebook and Instagram. That's the main way that consumers now get to, to know about a new brand. Yeah, and, and I uh, think the big difference is that you are really talking about these values in the moment of purchase. It's not yeah. like, you, like you're saying, they're seeing an ad and then they forgot about it. Uh, and then when they go by, they just forgot about it. It's that that message is really there at the moment where you need it. And also, um, what we've seen that is the this um, method of giving attributes, uh, sustainability values to this the specifically to the brands, and it's something that brands are um, really liking a lot because they it can also for them um, display and showcase exactly where their focus is in sustainability, because it indeed is that. Uh, and for consumers, it needs to be made clearer. And it's about that. It's about being transparent of where am I actually as a brand really focusing on. And, and we've seen a completely different focuses. So we do have brands that really focus on that environmental protection bucket. And they're doing everything they can on that. Uh, and then we have brands that maybe are really born for the animal uh, well-being part and everything they're doing, it's very concentrated into that. And then it also taps into different sensibility that mm-hmm. as, as consumers also we have. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, I think the most important part. Mm-hmm. I think I, I heard in an interview you were saying that uh, technology is a catalyst for sustainable profession. And for sure in your case it is. But I, I have um, a sense that uh, while before we were thinking about fashion as an industry of um, people who were thinking about styles, trends, um, fabrics, um, materials, and styles, and everything. Now, technology has come into the industry strong. And there is a huge marriage between fashion as it was and, and technology. What is happening and how it's changing the industry? I've seen this uh, process of technology happening right now quite for for some time, I have to say, in that sense. So before founding Renewon, I started my career at Nike and then at PDH, uh, Tommy Lefebvre and Calvin Klein. And I have to say that both companies um, have been really some of the pioneers um, of this. What I'm seeing in general, also in the in the industry, and also being part of um, the the fashion tech accelerator of Startup Bootcamp, is really this transition of first of all, um, technology looked into more data, so having um, more the, the decision as as designers, as 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 the business is being taken through data, and then the other part are the tools that with technology can enable our lives as consumers, but also in, in the end as brands, to respond to these consumer needs in a different way. Mm-hmm. This can go through online shopping, but also the experiences that consumers have in the stores, 
um, making them as smooth as possible and responding indeed to to the needs indeed as consumers we we have in 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 our new era and i have to say that in general like seeing also other industries uh, probably fashion has been late on some st- on some things uh, especially when it comes to data and especially when it comes to tools that empower also the um, the companies to to stay up to speed with the consumer as well as the online shopping but um, I also believe that part of it is because it's so difficult right so as you said fashion is a, a creative industry the pulse of it uh, comes from emotions comes from beauty comes from um, having this pleasure of, uh, of of also from from the designer to create and also the, the consumer to go buy something and I think that that's uh, an, an interesting contrast that has been happening but as well as the fact that as with fashion when there's the online and the technology playing it has also has to do because it's it's such a a material uh, also way for until now to mm-hmm. to actually um, go about it because it's it's clothing that we wear and what uh, we've seen is that for example if we compare it to the travel industry the full service of fashion happens through that purchase through that so it's it's not only that that you just buy a ticket to somewhere online but you haven't that experience as well while you're doing so so those have been I think the the the, the greatest blockers but also now uh, it's becoming a, a really interesting blend of what's happening. So when I'm talking about blend, uh, then I also talk specifically about the omni-channel part. So at PVH, I was part of the responsible team that we basically built from scratch the Store of the Future project. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really seeing how how we could merge these two worlds of consumers buying online or having the, the online part of the company with the offline. Mm-hmm. And that is something interesting that's also seeing now in the, in the next years as well. Uh, I think we've just started to tap into that in the way we, we merge the two worlds. And uh, I think that it's also something very, very important in, in, in fashion. But still, the, the online is, is an important part for the data part. So um, getting to understand the consumer, but also enabling all the information that it's coming for sustainability reasons as well. To the consumer. Mm-hmm. I was wondering if the fashion industry came so late to this and to technology and data because there was this sense in fashion that it was the values and the trends were given from high up, uh, like from the big stylist and from the big fashion designer and they were giving down to the people. Why now things are a little bit changing with data and everything. People are choosing their own trends and they are moving the industry and the trends much more than it was from above before. Yeah. So maybe that, that's one thing. But I have a question. What is happening in Amsterdam? Because you just talked about the, how fashion is connected to fabric and to, 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 to the real experience too. But fashion items are now becoming even digital you're exactly. not you're buying them and not even using them and i think there is a company in amsterdam what is happening in amsterdam which is a such a center of technology with sustainable fashion together there are so many companies coming up i think that amsterdam as a tech hub has uh, enabled this uh, so it has it both the tech hub uh, sometimes i like to see it as also a creative hub and so I think it was inevitable that also with fashion, those uh, would uh, blend together. Also now a center of uh, big companies being there. What we've seen indeed is this also with, with, uh, in the recent happening with COVID, um, how also indeed things have been going online. And uh, yeah, there's this new notion of uh, that has been existing for a little bit now, but it's expanding to the, this idea that we, why do we have to buy the clothes if they want to just wear them online? Why just don't have them online and then use this online pieces for our social media um, and our lives online? So that's something very interesting and exciting that's happening. It's, I've also seen 
agencies of models that are completely digital. So digital models that and, and digital agencies of digital models for this digital clothes. So there's a full uh, digital space that's happening and it has to do also with sustainability as well, which I also think Amsterdam is a, a great place for mm -hmm. that as well. Uh, I mean, there's fashion for good in, in Amsterdam mm -hmm. um, that it's catalyzing a lot of um, innovation in that space. Also, especially when it comes to technology blending in, the moment in which consumers are starting to interact with fashion, mm -hmm. uh, and that is not only indeed probably the more traditional ways, uh, but now fashion also getting into gaming, for example. So yeah, what ha what's happening in Amsterdam is really interesting and really looking, yeah, curious to know what's going to happen next. Yeah, if our next call uh, by Zoom, you will have a dress. Just exactly. create us for the Zoom call. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, so I, I had a question, because we talked so much about technology, what is, what is, what is the theme behind Renoun? How, what, what kind of people you have in your team? What skills they have? Who they are? So how it happens also with startups and what was really important to me, especially at the beginning, is was covering those parts of the team that were core. So indeed, technology is an important part. So part of our, it was the third person that actually joined our team. So the first was myself. Um, then secondly, uh, Gabriele, who has uh, extensive uh, experience in uh, data and merging together that numeric part into the actual technology as well. And then uh, we have Nico, who's our CTO, and he also had uh, extensive experience indeed uh, in, in, in all everything that is uh, back in development, especially. So creating the uh, framework from which we would be basing um, uh, Renun. And, third, and fourthly, I still think that uh, for more, what we're doing, we were really looking for a person that would bring that commercial also experience mm -hmm. as well. So we're not a fully... Um, like our core team has all these different experiences that are still important because you're still a business, although you're a technology company. And now, although the team that we're building is very focused on technology. So uh, we have uh, now, uh, we are 10 in total and uh, all the others are uh, basically engineers in our team. So everything has to do with front end, all the, the back end uh, data that we have. And I heard you have an ambassador pro program also. And we have an ambassador program, mm -hmm. exactly. Very interesting. Where are you in the timeline of Renoun? I remember you launched already in Amsterdam. Is it expanded already to other countries? Where are you? Where are yes. you and, and yeah. where is it going? Once we started the process, so the, the first thing that we started was the, the, the backend development. And then through the year 2020, um, we had a prototype phase till uh, through the, the great feedback that we got from the market from there. Um, we uh, had our first pre-seed round and that meant that indeed we brought in some um, uh, industry experts that are now part of uh, the company as investors, among which the ex-CEO of Gucci, ex-CTO of Use and Laporte, the CEO of uh, Lanieri and uh, also some people from Spotify. Now we just launched uh, the official product and it has a focus in the Netherlands. So we're going to stay in the Netherlands in the next months as well, building basically our team. Uh, now with the other uh, two hires that we have in our tech team through there, once we have that product and the, the market in the Netherlands that it has been settled, then we're going to go more internationally. Uh -huh. And the first markets are going to be indeed English-based. So... Um, we're looking at um, UK and US as well. So I think we're going to go through the end of the interview. I have a, a question for you after all these years working uh, near fashion and into technology and especially on sustainable fashion. What do you think is the, the biggest obstacles that we have in front of us to try to scale sustainability, which I think is the biggest challenge we have? And what do you think are our magic powers, our uh, magic uh, instruments that we can use for this? Where Renun tackles uh, the problem was really that bridge between the adoption of innovation and new things that the fashion industry is doing the fashion industry is also an industry that it's 
very aware of the market. I guess probably even more than other industries. So it's very led by the marketing itself and the consumers in itself to push sustainability further from the consumer sense it needs to happen a pull as well that will pull the all the brands and the industry to also move faster so we're really there to we really want to bridge this gap and also enable consumers to be part of this change that is happening together with brands and avoid having the industry just working on its own and then feeding things to the consumer who doesn't necessarily understand and then be questioning why is the consumer not adopting this great thing that I've done if they don't understand it and they don't understand the value and the deep meaning of it they're not going to adopt it so I think the adoption part is it's still something very thin uh, it's a thin line that we need to strengthen getting the consumer excited as well of everything that is happening around sustainability. And uh, once that's done, then everything is also going to be much uh, easier because brands are going to be pushed even more to do amazing things in this topic. When it comes to also scalability indeed of some solutions, sometimes I, I see that a, a problem is indeed uh, could be the, the consumer adoption. So if we enable more people to adopt it, then the more scale also some of the solutions might be. I'm thinking about uh, some materials, for example, as well. And others are inherently linked to the materials themselves. So being able to, through that type of technology, just in itself, be able to scale those innovation. And I think, um, in general, as good, great points, I, I've, we've seen in the recent years, hubs uh, that are making the shift happen. Uh, like, I'm, indeed, I'm thinking about Fashion for Good, because they've, do, they've been doing an amazing job in that sense bringing forward the innovation and i think those type of hubs play a, a key role in making um, brands uh, adopt the innovation and i think if we can make even more not only through renewal but also more the possibility for consumers to then make the adoption of brands with uh, uh, with what they consume that is something that would be amazing so i think this link is something that has been uh, in the industry and for sure can be even more brought further but then this other link needs to be definitely strengthened more it seems to me like the work of a cultural mediator almost between industries between companies and consumers uh, between values this might be a big jump but i'm wondering you speak six languages and you have lived in different countries has that taught you something about this or brought you to what you're doing and what you're trying to do? I believe that what I've seen in general is that, that there is like no status quo uh, that cannot be changed in that sense because everything that we build is all our societies and um, all the norms and a culture that we build are all part of us as, as human beings, like basically building them. So there's nothing stopping us or blocking us to move to towards a different direction and changing them. So I think being in those in these different cultures, yeah, you really realize that it's it's our construct, and also we can construct something even greater that would help us as humanity evolve in a, in a, in a specific sense, but also protect the environment in which uh, we really live in. Um, and yeah, this is definitely something that has the different experience that I had enabled me, but also the different ways that in these different cultures, things are tackled uh, and made. So um, I have to say, for example, in the Dutch culture, uh, the pragmatism of things and, and really going out there in the market, trying things out. It's also the, the fact that I, I was in multinationals uh, that are also taken from the US culture uh, that is something uh, really important. And then from the Italian culture, I have the love for fashion and everything that is beautiful. So I, I understand from this last part that you are optimistic for our future and that we can try to solve the problems that we have with sustainability. But I wonder if sometimes you need to recharge and find the new, new energy, new power and how you do it if there is a place or an activity that you would find energy. 
a, a long passion of mine has been uh, uh, yoga. Mm -hmm. So um, that's something that uh, definitely has changed everything I do in a positive way. And so I always try to, to, to have it dear to me. And I also ha have had uh, uh, the time before uh, building Renewal to actually express this also with other people. That is definitely something that is really important. And I have to say also the people that are now in my network, other female founders, other industry leaders that are really passionate about what we're building. And yeah, this is something that uh, basically for not only for me, but also the other founders has basically become our passion in, in our life in this very moment. And having this network around is also something very, very important to get that energy always on top. Thank you so much. It has been a pleasure to meet you and good luck with the renown. I'm really looking forward to try it. Thanks a lot. It was really nice. <laughs> Thank you. Goodbye to everybody. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of Sustainability at Work. If you like this episode, please consider rating and sharing it. It will help others to discover it, and the more we are learning about sustainability, the better. You can also subscribe on YouTube. Sustainability at Work is a series created together with Traces and Dreams, a collective platform to tell the story of our times and connect the dots by embracing complexity and a diversity of views and ideas. See you next time.